G'day everyone, I'm Smokescreen and welcome back to another video. So this is a combination, it's race C, which is interesting, because I, got, I generally don't do too many race Cs, but I decided to give this one a go, because it was a very interesting combination. It was the Super Formula car, the Toyota one, at Circuit de Spa Francochamps, I think is the correct pronunciation, but, you know, we'll call it Spa Francochamps. Let's not lie here, but... We'll just commentate the first lap and we'll come back to a little bit more info about the track and car. So you can see it was a standing start, so a little bit of traction control. We have a Ferrari liveried Super Formula sideways off the start, coming into turn one. And I do brakes a tiny bit late, but everyone gets through okay. And then, yeah, look at that. So just a little bit too enthusiastic on the power there. Of course, we, you know, this is a tyre wear race, so we do have the effects of cold versus hot tyres. Um, that is a thing, but... Yes, so unfortunately, uh, we find ourselves dead last, stone dead cold last, 10 seconds off the leader, 2.5 seconds off the guy in 18th. Uh, not a great start, let's be honest, you know, I don't think that does not require any special detective work to realise that, that is not good, although we do have a few people serving penalties as we come into the Lacombe chicane, uh, make up three positions up into 16th. Now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be quite honest here, this is honestly, this particular race here, just this one, you know, these 10 laps just here, was, is honestly one of the most frustrating races I'd ever taken part in. Now, uh, of course it was my fault that I spun out on turn one, the source hairpin, uh, yeah, that was my fault, uh, so pretty much you can say it's my fault that I am down this far in the field, you see, I go way wide going through Puon. It's also called Double Gorsh, I've got in my notes here. But yeah, we managed to lose two positions there. Back down into 18th. Uh, so, lovely. Although we're now two and a half seconds ahead of the guy 19th. So he's having an absolute shocker. But as we went through on the exit of Puon, uh, there was a little bit of contact with the guy that's in 17th, Miaken. And he's got himself seven seconds of penalty. Someone spun out on the exit of Stavolo and make up another position there, up into 17th. So we'll just pick our way through the group here. So the penalty line is down the Kemmel Strait after Radion in turn four. Uh, down the Kemmel Strait and seven seconds, you know, you're going to lose. You might, you'll probably lose about over ten seconds worth of time at least from that. So we're definitely going to make that position up. Someone's spun out through the final chicane, make up another position. So he's got a penalty and he's slow. Another position up in the 15th. Then we have the trifecta of cars up ahead each with a penalty ranging from one to seven seconds, I believe. Yeah, one, two, and seven seconds. So we'll gain three positions coming up the Kennel Straight, provided I don't bin it somehow going in a straight line. Now coming up, one of the most famous corners in motorsport, Eau Rouge and Radion, uh, the three-turn complex. It, it's kind of a chicane, I guess you could say, but it's like an uphill, very fast uh, few corners there going onto the Kennel Straight here at Spa. Um, penalty line just there, three, a trio of serving penalties there up into 12th, so it could be worse I suppose. And we've got another group of three cars up ahead, so now I'm just going to try and get my head down, try not focus on the guys behind because they are in slipstream still, They're a little bit wide on the exit of Malbody, uh, but not to worry. Uh, we'll skip ahead to the end of lap two, so I was spending this lap trying to catch up to the three cars here and they sort of get caught on each other on the entry to the chicane and I managed to make my way way up into the group, but coming on the exit there, this you know, old Haas liveried just gives me absolutely no space around the outside of the bus stop chicane. Now, to be fair, the chicane on the outside of that chicane is not the best place to be because it is extremely tight. See, at the end of the next lap, we caught up to the group again. Hopefully, we can get through this one. A little bit of contact with the red one, and I managed to get a cut back. The red one gets a good run around the outside, but the green car got a poor run, and I managed to get the cut back on the uh, underneath him on the exit of that chicane there, coming into turn one. I thought I was going to go into the back of him there, so I had to take evasive action. A little bit messy on the exit of the source. One car loses on the exit, and oh my goodness. There it is. The absolute bullshit penalty. Two seconds for absolutely nothing. Someone else lost it on the exit of the chicane. The car was ghosted by the time I got to him, and somehow we made contact. Somehow I served the two second penalties. So, there we go. Um, 
penalty line is far enough down the straight that you can serve any penalty you might get through the source. So we're down to 11th again. Actually, you've got a car up the inside going into the comp chicane. Side by side through you is not where you want to be. And then this car, I'm not sure if you saw on the radar there, came absolutely weighing in, uh, giving his way more than two cents worth. Uh, in that little altercation there and uh, displaces the other car down into 13th I find myself in 12th after serving a penalty so yeah this race is extremely topsy-turvy so far but hopefully we can get a bit of a break in here and I can talk about the car so it's the super formula car of which there are two types in the game the super formula Toyota engine super formula Honda engine uh, this car is a one mate race or well, this race rather is a one mate race uh, using the Toyota the car on my inside there went very wide through Poulon, comes back onto the track and sort of comes way across and squeezes me on the outside and we end up going sober through to the Fug Chicane. Uh, not a good place to be. And then on the exit here, he loses it on the AstroTurf there and just absolutely drills into the side of me. Now, that was a clearly a mistake from him. And then I come back onto the track going really slow, get rear-ended and pushed into the wall. I find myself down into 15th after another car gets past there. So getting back up to speed, I'm going to have another car go past me down into 16th again out of 18th so someone's quit now down to 18 drivers but yeah this is exactly what I mean so as soon as I start making inroads to a particular group you know as soon as I start gaining a position something will happen either a mistake on my behalf or a mistake on someone else's behalf end up getting displaced down positions again so now we find ourselves once again behind a group of three first of which in the group has a penalty going into turn one now anything happens through here Get a nice line through there a little bit of wheel spin on the exit now this car um, 700 sorry 639 horsepower so extremely powerful all going to those rear wheels are on racing hard tires so the tire with the least amount of grip in the racing category uh, we do get quite a bit of wheel spin coming out of this slower corner so turn one um, and the chicane at the end uh, in second gear, of course, that is as well. So you can imagine first gear is quite sketchy. Uh, going into the com again, managed to go up the inside through turn six actually from another car after a bit of contact with the guy directly ahead of me at present moment. Now coming down into the hairpin here, I've got someone looking up the inside and I'm just focusing on that too much now. I'm not proud of that particular moment there. I really should have slowed and give, given the guy that position back. Um, that was just a mistake on my behalf. I had a car going up the inside, so I wanted to brake late to avoid, you know, a move into that corner. And unfortunately, I braked a little bit too late and managed to uh, punt the guy ahead of me into absolute oblivion. So we'll skip ahead. We we'll find ourselves in 15th. So we'll skip ahead and we'll see how many positions we can make up between now and the end of the race. Car goes wide on the exit of no name. Managed to make that position up, and then coming through the com chicane, got a yellow flag up ahead. Someone's binded on the left-hand side and is ghosted. Make up one more position up into 12th. That's excellent at this point. Coming into Puon of lap 8. Let's have a look. The guy up ahead just gets caught on the AstroTurf, as do I. I think I just followed him off, and of course, being the following car, you know, I'm a little bit later with my uh, judgments in a way, way wide. I managed to lose a position down into 13th. Coming through the hairpin into no name corner. Let's see what happens to the exit here. Uh, anyone bins it? I've just got this car here going very slow. We use a bit of that overtake. <laughs> Somehow I managed to go into the back of it instead of overtaking. Coming through pool on now, flat out from here, all the way until the Fug Chicane. Got a penalty coming back on the track here, and the guy ahead went into the back of him. He was obviously slow coming off the track for some reason. Around the outside there, not where exactly where you want to be. And the car with the penalty goes a little bit wide. Ah, oh, massive Constantina effect. Um, it went wide onto the AstroTurf, lost speed, lost grip. This SJ Polko guy went into the back of him, and you know that was that was it for me. I went into the back of him too and lost all my momentum. We had a car spun out on the exit of campus. You see, I went way wide going through Corporfier, uh, coming up towards Blanchemont. Uh, thankfully, no penalty for that because that was quite clear track extending there. Um, hopefully, we don't. Get any more penalties coming into the bus stop chicane. Of course, it's not actually a bus stop chicane, but coming through here, oh god, that was, you know, oh man, <laughs> unexpected. So, we'll explain that one. We had one of the red cars go very deep into the first part of the chicane and pretty much came onto the apex of the second part of the chicane at a 90 degree angle, slammed into me. I lost way too much speed and then getting onto the power because I was going so much slower, I just completely misjudged how much I could get onto the accelerator there and I ended up spinning it around. So, you know, 
this is kind of what happens. Look at that. I'm a minute off the lead. He had someone spin out on the exit of that hairpin there, but you know, it's you know, it's really doesn't mean much because you saw I got such a poor start. I was the one car that spun out on turn one, and you see it just puts me way back down into the field here, and this is exactly what I mean. Uh, there was just so much fighting back here, I was getting caught in too many incidents, and I really didn't want to be in the incidents. I prefer clean air, I think. It's taken me a while to sort of get to know that, and I'll just have this car go really slow into the racing line for absolutely no particular reason at all. But we'll use a bit of overtake here, we'll just commentate the end of this lap. A little bit of overtake, I've got so much overspeed there, and I just slam it up the inside going through turn 16 there. And <laughs> that was quite a forceful move, and I'm sure he's not happy with that evident by the fact that he comes in and turns left instead of right in order to hit me uh, in my rear splitter, no not splitter, uh, forget the name of it, rear, the back, hit the back of me and absolutely punts me off penalty free. But yes, you end up finishing that wraith, wraith, race in 14th. Uh, you see my driver looking at the car in absolute disgust, it's really not a pretty livery now that I'm looking at it here. It's got iron brew printed on the side, but that is evidently the only thing printed on the entire car. Uh, we'll have to change that at some point. But we'll have another go because I really want to get through turn one cleanly. Now that is really the key to the race. Uh, I want to get through turn one cleanly and hopefully have a bit of clear air. This is what I was saying before. It's taken me a long time to realize, but I think I prefer clean air rather than f like in a group in slipstream. I think. I can race cleaner and more consistently if I'm on my own versus in slipstream because of dirty air. It can really affect how I drive. But we've learnt from last time. We'll have the traction control on. I turned it off pretty much immediately after the launch last time. You see here, I'm actually going to leave it on till I exit turn one to hopefully combat any little bit of oversteer I get. We're going to go extremely tentative into turn one. You see, we break really early and. Look at that, that was pure Moses effect there. Uh, we find ourselves up in 4th from 13th on the grid. So I think there must have been some lag between certain cars and my internet or whatever. And everyone sort of spread out, cleared the way for my car to come through like a bulldozer. Uh, of course, I, I didn't really feel like there was any contact on my behalf. So that was absolutely lovely by me. So we're going to go a slightly defensive going down to the straight till we get up to top speed, about 306 kilometers an hour. But unfortunately, I misjudged the break into La Combe Chicane and go extremely deep, lose two positions down into sixth. A little bit of oversteer on the exit of Malwoody there. Um, I was actually quite a, you know, a violent kick of oversteer there, uh, coming into the chicane a little bit deep in this absolutely punts galore going on behind me and I lose another position down into 7th, temporarily down into 8th but unfortunately he goes a little bit too wide and ends up off the track on the exit so I settle back into the racing line in 7th place so much better start but I wasn't quite able to hold on to it but you know I'm 7th I started 13th it could be much worse but still a much better start than I had envisioned um, or that I had experienced really last time coming into the chicane at the end of lap 2 so I'm up in 6th place at this point I um, don't quite remember what happened to the other guy must have must have been too interesting so I edited out uh, someone loses on the exit of the chicane there so we managed to make up another position up into 5th and we have 2nd place in view 1st place is just gone uh, again nice switch back move on the exit of turn 1 there I lost position gained a position or I, rather, I gained and then lost in that order. Coming up through Eau Rouge now, these cars, you know, absolutely no question about it, it is flat out through Eau Rouge and Radion as well for that matter. Or well, Blanchemont rather is what I meant. Uh, Radion of course is, this, is the, in the same complex as before. Coming up towards the Com Chicane, we're in fifth place currently, two cars ahead going side by side, and I just nudged the guy ahead, in, you know, to facilitate him to move through up into the third position rather than staying side by side and that just displaces the other car on the outside of turn five there and I managed to make up that position there and you see this is what happens when you end up really narrow on the hairpin there it's called Bruchel I think is the correct pronunciation Boucher, something like that uh, is the correct, correct pronunciation but you end up too close to the apex and you, the car is just trying to climb the curb and it just creates you know creates a massive instability in the car trying to get into the power you see through the course of me talking through the few corners here, through the middle sector here at Spa, the car up ahead has just stretched out a little bit of a gap, up to a second now, of course, 
we know slipstream range is around, starts at around one and a half seconds behind and gets progressively stronger. So we're now on to the final part of the track, massive straight, and you know, nothing really much happened throughout this race. I was just stuck in third place trying, not really defending, but just thinking about this guy behind me in fifth. So we skip ahead to lap 8 here, where it's really much the same story as the previous, what, previous 6 laps, really. Um, but we'll follow from here to the end of the race and see how we go here. So the Super Formula car is actually, it actually feels good around here. There's a lot of, you know, I think the main point of Spa, however, is that Eau Rouge Radion turns 2, 3, and 4. Uh, in a GT3 car, I think particular GT3 cars, you can go flat out if you perfect the line. Um, this car it's easy flat out, same for Blanchemont like I said before, so it kind of, the track kind of loses its character in my opinion with using these cars here, but you know, it's still, it's still good, still provides a nice challenge, and I reckon, you know, if you have a look at the fastest lap there, 57-0, now of course there is fuel use and tyre wear, there's no pit stop required of course, but um, see I'm sort of moving around in the 159, Actually, my fastest up is a 58.8, which isn't too bad, I think. My qualifying time is like a 58.2 or something. But, um, you know, I felt like it was quite hard to really get the maximum speed out of this combination. That does tend to happen. I think Dragon Trail Seaside is a track that's really hard to maximise in any class. But, yeah, we'll come back to this. Um, yeah, so it's a good combination. I thought it was a nice race. I only did the two races around here. I thought... You know, that's interesting enough to have a go. No pit stop required, so no strategy to worry about. We'll see how we go. Um, of course, fuel is fine. Absolutely no need to worry about fuel. We're on lap 9 out of 10, and we're going to use 50% of our tank. Um, tyres are the main thing here, so you've really got to... You know, it's not dead crucial to be able to look after your tyres in this race, but, you know, it does help to sort of look after your tyres, and then it's at this point in the race where you want to sort of use that advantage or use that, use that bit of extra tyre that you saved throughout the beginning of the race. So, since we've rejoined the action here, I've been stuck in a little bit of a battle with this guy. So, he went deep going into Bruchelle, Boucher, probably say, turn eight, the hairpin. And I managed to make my way through the inside there. And then on the exit of the source, he got underneath me and just uses, and just used the uh, overtake to get the overtake done. You know, uh, that's obviously the point of overtake. That there is how you take that hairpin as well. You do, do not want to end up narrow like I did when I explained it previously. But throughout the first half of this lap, I've got eight tenths ahead, nine tenths ahead of him, in fact. And you'll see we've got a bit of an interesting dynamic here. Clearly, he hasn't used a lot of his overtake. So you see down in the bottom right corner next to the radar, there's like an overtake. It's the same, it's pre presented exactly the same as the fuel gauge, so the, the white line represents how much you've got left um, and you know you might even be able to see it I've got a tiny dot next to the E on my overtake gauge uh, that's how much I've got left for an entire lap and I have to defend this position here so eight tenths behind he is going to be in slipstream here um, you know it's quite hard to defend especially up this straight here considering that Blanchemont it is easily flat out there it's so flat out in fact you can take multiple lines through there you can go in narrow come in wide whatever you want to do you see I'm uh, defensive on the entry to bus stop um, hopefully that leads to him being on the outside and I just park it on that apex absolutely no way for him to get past there on the exit of the bus stop chicane there and you see he's behind we'll come into turn one again I don't decide to go defensive three tenths is quite a long way to go for a move meet the apex you know you can abuse it a little bit more but we managed to get through there nicely and we actually get a good exit out of that chicane now I've got a little hint of overtake probably one second worth of boost there uh, I'm not quite sure when we're going to use that but you see he's four tenths behind and gaining um, now these cars they easily or in in slipstream they top out you know there I am using like a little bit of overtake they top out a bit at 306 kilometers an hour in slipstream with overtake and they eat quite easily reach that so the cars you know, it can get to a stalemate towards the end of that camel straight. It's probably a little bit long for the amount of downforce that these cars have in the balanced, you know, balance of performance. You know, I think maybe if they did this in real life, they'd probably have a little bit less downforce so they could have more variation of speed towards the end of that long straight. But that's not for me to decide. I'm not the expert. So, you know, 
uh, we'll round out this lap now. We'll talk about the closing stages of this race now. The guys five tenths behind have got about half a lap to try and defend the position here. There's not going to be any gains at all into second. You see, he's nine seconds, and then the guy in first is, you know, about 15 seconds ahead of him. And of course, I'm 25 seconds behind the leader. Quick maps there. Um, coming into the last sector now, the first and last sector, sectors one and three, here at Spa is the fast stuff. So this is, you know, you, I guess you could say the easy stuff. And then sector two is where all the corners are, obviously. Have a look at the map up there. Um, coming into the bus stop chicane now, four tenths behind. You know, I don't think it's, it's, it's extremely far back to be going for a move here, coming into the braking zone now. He's obviously got better tyres than me, but coming through the second part, he just bumps me just a little bit, and I end up a little bit wide, not quite able to get onto the power, and I was a little bit flustered and changed up gear into third a little bit too early, and I managed to lose so much momentum coming out of there. Um, so we managed to lose that position down into fourth. But the highlight of that race, it was the start, really. You saw how amazing that start was. It was just, uh, you should rewind and have a look. It was that good. You know, there was a little bit of lag in there, you know, a little bit of cars going here and there, a little bit of contact, and then the, everyone's internet caught up with each other, and bang, a path up the middle of the entire pack opened up for eye, and we made our way through quite angelically. But that's going to be the end of this one today, so first race, absolute disaster, second race, absolute amazing start, and there were some good battles in there, and you know, I'm not quite sure, that last move on the final lap of that race that you just saw, was that intentional? Did he bump me wide just a little bit to do that, or, you know, it could have been an accident, who am I to say? Um, that chicane is quite awkward and tricky, so it's kind of hard to place blame on drivers for making a mistake through there, because it is the most awkward part of the track. Um, but fourth place, you know, we'll take it. I did start 13th, remember, and I felt like I kept up good pace throughout that race. But that's going to be the end of this one today, so do hit that like button if you enjoyed it. If you'd like to see more videos like this, there is a bright red subscribe button down below. I do urge you to click that, and you can see every video that I ever upload. Uh, that's going to be the end of the video today, and that means that is it from me. So once again, I do thank you very much for watching. See you later.